Welcome as we gather on this Ash Wednesday as we begin our Lenten journey together, as we focus this year on the theme, Places of the Passion, uh, opportunity to maybe visit some of the different places around Israel, places important in Jesus' life and ministry, important to us as we continue in this journey that takes us to the cross once again, uh, and beyond the cross where we are able to then celebrate the gift and promise of the resurrection. And so we welcome each of you as we join together, as you come and join us for this time of worship, as we journey during this Lenten season. Uh, just a couple brief words on the service. Uh, normally at our Ash Wednesday service, we have the celebration of Holy Communion, and we have the imposition of ashes. And of course, things are different this year as we are not able to meet in person. And so already this morning from 10 to 11, we had opportunity for the imposition of ashes uh, for those who wish to drive through the parking lots uh, where I was available, but again, uh, for those listening now, uh, this afternoon, this evening, from 5 to 6, so after work, if you wish to have the imposition of ashes, please stop by church, uh, driving through the parking lot from Stanley Street, you don't have to get out of the car, or remain in the car, please wear a mask, but I will be there to offer the imposition of ashes. Uh, those ashes, uh, remind us first, uh, the ashes is a sign of repentance. Uh, we enter into this season recognizing our sinfulness, our brokenness, uh, but also with that cross, the ashen cross, a reminder of God's promise in our life. And so we pray, hope and pray that this is a journey that will bring us closer to God as we come to understand the gift and promise of the cross. Uh, I mentioned communion. Uh, unfortunately, we are not able to celebrate at that at this time. Uh, you will notice throughout the service a lot of reference to communion, a reference to Christ's body and blood, whether it be through the hymns that we sing, or through the prayers, and I kept those in there. We kept them in uh, so that we can continue to celebrate that gift and promise. For even though we do not receive, uh, yet we understand and receive the promise that is given through Christ. And so with that, uh, we welcome you as we gather for worship, and we thank you for joining us. And each week at 11 in the morning, we will continue on Wednesdays, continue the Lenten journey. And so welcome as we begin with the call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us ever walk with Jesus to behold the gift of his forgiveness. To marvel at the magnitude of his mercy Because Passover is coming, faithful Lord, with me abide.
Magnificent and merciful Father, because I walk into dark and dangerous places, hear me as I confess my sins. My heart lingers in places of lust and lies. My ears delight in going to places of gossip, deceit, and ridicule. My eyes lead me to places of envy and greed. Hear the good news. Jesus walked to places of rejection, suffering, torment, and death for you. Jesus was determined to go to Gethsemane, Gabbatha, and Golgotha for you. That's why Jesus forgives you completely and loves you eternally. Faithful Lord, with me abide. Again, in this time where the imposition of ashes are received. Uh, some have joined us already this morning. Some will join us again this afternoon. Uh, but with that in mind, we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, send forth your Holy Spirit, that this Lent we may ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure, through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirit's lure. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, 
your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the book of Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, and as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Imagine for a moment an area around Oklahoma, south-central United States. In the springtime, the weather there has a fairly predictable pattern. You have that warm tropical air that blows out of the Gulf of Mexico. And at the same time, you have that cool, dry air that comes down from the central plains. And then to the west, warm, dry air begins to build. When these three masses meet, they produce a predictable pattern. And what would that be? Wildly wicked weather. The take cover kind of weather, get to the basement, call 911. I don't know, perhaps some of us have lived through a tornado. Almost all of us have lived through severe weather where the sky grows dark and cloudy, the wind begins to howl, where the rain comes down in buckets, the power lines shake, stuck in a very bad place. Lent begins with Ash Wednesday, and with it we begin a sermon series called Places of the Passion, Using Matthew's gospel, we will walk with Jesus to places like the upper room, the Garden of Gethsemane, Pilate's Judgment Hall, and the Hill of Golgotha. The places of the Passion. Today, we walk with Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. Matthew 26, verse 1, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples. Now Matthew records five teaching blocks of Jesus. Five times Matthew writes, when Jesus had finished all these sayings. Matthew 26, 1 is the fifth and final time Matthew writes these words. So what's the point? Matthew is finishing his gospel. He's wrapping things up. It's all coming to an end. And it will end with a massive storm. 
The sky is growing dark and cloudy. The wind is beginning to howl. Soon the rain will be coming down in buckets. How so? Jesus said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. This will be Christ's last Passover in Jerusalem. He is about to be crucified, dead and buried, stuck in a bad place with a storm ready to hit. We all know what it feels like to be stuck in a vulnerable, exposed place when a storm hits. Are you raising teenagers? Did you get caught from a team? Did you lose the love of your life? Are finances tight? What about your health? Is age getting the best of you? Most of life's storms come and go. There's another kind of storm that comes, but it never goes. So what am I talking about? It's the storm called sin. Sin comes and it never goes. So what does sin look like? That the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Caiaphas. Caiaphas is the high priest. And he held that office from 18 through 36 A.D., longer than anyone else in this era. A fact that indicates his skill and political shrewdness. Caiaphas knows that a public arrest of Jesus will be very risky. There would most certainly be an uproar among the people because they believed Jesus was a mighty prophet. Caiaphas couldn't have Christ killed during the Passover feast, but he couldn't wait until after the Passover because then Jesus would probably leave Jerusalem and go back to Galilee. So why are the chief priests and elders plotting to kill Jesus? Perhaps because they were losing their place. They had the most important places in the synagogue and in the marketplace. They wore long tassels. They gave a tenth of their possessions. They fasted twice a week. They prayed long prayers. They could take their esteemed place in the community and thank God they were not in the place of other people like tax collectors and sinners. The chief priests and elders had a place of power and respect until Christ came. Christ's ministry, it attracted crowds. His words touched hearts, his hands opened eyes, his presence brought about a life that was full of grace and truth. Then what happened? The chief priests and elders began to lose their place. It's why they gathered to plot and prepare for Christ's death. So do you see what sin is? Sin is holding on to my place. Sin is not allowing Christ first place. And sin is making others stay in their place. We're not much different from the chief priests and elders. Eventually, sin brings with it tornadic winds and life-threatening lightning that destroys everything. And what is Christ's response to our sin? 
Does he condemn us? Does he lock us up and throw away the key? Again, remember what Jesus says. You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Jesus walks to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. At Golgotha, Jesus walks into the storm. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Jesus willingly places himself in the middle of the storm, the tornado of all tornadoes. Can you hear him? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today, you will be with me in paradise. It is finished. Are you stuck in a bad place? Jesus was stuck in a bad place. Are you hurting? Jesus hurt. Bleeding? Jesus bled. Feel like you're gasping for air? Jesus gasped for air. Crying, Jesus cried. Is your heart breaking? Jesus' heart was absolutely broken. So what does it all mean? It means that we are not alone in the storm. We are never alone in our storm. To the Father, haunted by angry outbursts, Jesus speaks. To the husband and wife who barely talk to each other, Jesus speaks. To all of us exposed to the constant storm of sin, Jesus speaks. And what does he say? I love you. I love you. So what should we do when we're stuck in a bad place? when it looks as though everything is going to be wiped off the map? Should we panic? Should we freak out? Do something we'll regret for the rest of our lives? No. God knows how to get people safely through the storm. Isn't that the message of the Passover? God doing whatever it takes to get Israel safely through their unpredictable and hellish storm called Egypt. There was the Pharaoh with his whips and bricks. There was the Red Sea, which looked like a dead end. And there were the horses and chariots. What happened? Israelites walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. God knows how to get people safely through the storm. Isn't that the message of Christ's Passover meal as well? And even though we can't physically celebrate today, yet we receive what it promises. With the true body and blood, Jesus takes us from a stormy place to another place a place of peace in his presence, a place to lay our burdens down, a place to receive forgiveness and be made new. Jesus has reserved your place, a place just for you. Amen.
It is comforting to know that we are not alone, that Christ has a place for us. Looking forward to the day we can celebrate again, yet in silence we receive that promised gift, even as we respond through our giving. Onward in Christ's footsteps treading, pilgrims here, our home above, full of faith and hope and love, let us do the Father's bidding. And so we pray. Jesus, you will finally deliver us from every storm. So we lift our prayers and raise our petitions to you. O oh Lord, Deliver us from pride and arrogance, lest we fail to acknowledge our sins and confess them. O oh Lord, deliver the world from the enemies of peace and from injustice, and give us good and faithful leaders to protect the unborn and promote virtue. O oh Lord, Deliver the erring from their darkness, the doubting from their uncertainty, and the wandering from their ways, and return them to you, O Lord. Deliver us from the terror of death and the grave, O Lord. Deliver us from selfish desire, from the tyranny of things, and from the wasteful use of the resources you have entrusted to our care. O oh Lord, deliver us from ingratitude for all your mercies and restore our hearts to hope and joy. O oh Lord, Jesus, deliver us and bring us to the table of your body and blood. O oh Lord, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites us to walk with him to Jerusalem 
a place of great suffering and a place of great love. We will walk with Jesus all the way to the empty tomb and resurrection victory. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 